I'm going to start recording this. My name is Judy Miller. I want to welcome you to our webinars. Today our webinar is the best one ever because it is our campaign builder and I'm going to show you how to automate your marketing with Infusionsoft's campaign builder. I'm going to make it super easy but I just want you all to know that this is a basic training webinar. So if you'd like to go faster and further with the campaign builder in our help center at help.infusionsoft.com there's a webinar tab and you can go go watch different webinars that go a little bit deeper into the campaign builder. This one's a very basic one. I'm going to go over the basic steps. Please feel free to ask questions in the little question box in your GoToWebinar. I will get to your questions. And please, 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 if I start going too fast, tell me to slow down because I get really excited about this webinar and I start going way too fast. So let's get started. By the end of this webinar, you're going to be able to create a lead capture campaign. I'm going to show you how to make a web form. You may know it as a contact us form or a registration form or sign up form. We call it a web form, just a difference in vocabulary. I'm going to show you how to create a sequence. That's where the magic of Infusionsoft happens. Understand a simple campaign and I'm going to show you how to get campaigns for free. I will be sending the recording with all the goodies that I'm offering in this webinar to your email address that you gave with your when you signed up. So you'll all get this even if you need to leave early. With your Infusionsoft application, you do have access to help.infusionsoft.com, and that's where you can get other levels of training. It will also get you access to our support numbers and then access to the mastermind. So let me show you real quick because some people get confused. If I come to help.infusionsoft.com and just type it up on top in my browser window, this is our help center. You can either write something in the white area, like, hey, I want to add a contact, and you can get information right there. But if you come to the webinars right here in the middle black tab, the Infusionsoft Basic Training is how you can sign up for my webinars. And then the Infusionsoft Mastermind, if you hit View All, you can see those webinars right there. They're, they're located right on the screen. So if you want to go deeper into the Campaign Builder, just come to the right, look for the webinar, you know, Copywriting 101, campaign reviews, and you can watch them right there. And that's in our Help Center. Also, one of our um, success guides that is now a success partner guide created this great document. It's called the Campaign Builder Overview, and I'm going to give this to you with your recording. It is amazing. It goes over every single piece of the Campaign Builder in kind of a technical writing. It's a five-page PDF document, and it's absolutely freaking amazing. I'm sure you'll use it a lot and I'll be sending that to you for um, a free gift for coming to my live webinar. So thank you so much. So with the Infusionsoft Campaign Builder, I know that this breaks it down and makes it super, super simple, but really there are just two ingredients to a campaign. Just two ingredients to build a simple campaign and even to make it more complex, two ingredients. The first ingredient is a goal. And campaigns begin with a goal, and a goal is represented by a circle. A goal is what you want the contact to do. I want them to fill out a web form. I want them to fill out a landing page. I want them to click on a link. I want them to register for an event. You can see we have different goals. Web form submitted, landing page submitted, product purchase, quote status. There's different goals. Today we're going to focus on the web form submitted goal, but you can go to our Help Center and type in Campaign Goals and it will go over every single one of these goals, what they mean and how to use them. And also, in that PDF document that I'm sending, that also goes over each of these. Today we're going to focus on the Web Form Submitted Goal, Contact Us Submitted. And we're going to make one of those today. The second ingredient is a sequence. And a sequence is represented by that rectangle with the clock in the middle. When a goal is achieved, it pushes people into the sequence. When somebody fills out that form, it pushes people into the sequence. And this sequence is where the Infusionsoft magic happens. It's where all the automation happens. Let me give you an example. You can send an email automatically, have a timer to go out in two days for another email to be sent out automatically. Two days later, create a task for yourself that gets sent to your dashboard saying that you need to send them their free gift or send them the first chapter of your book or send them that DVD or that welcome package. Email, delay timer, email, delay timer. And this all happens inside that rectangle sequence. 
There's lots of other things you can do. You can apply a tag, a note, assign an owner, create an appointment. There's lots of cool stuff that happens inside that magical sequence. So if you can remember these two ingredients, a goal pushes people into a sequence, you can build a campaign. All a complex campaign is, is a goal that pushes to a sequence that pushes people to another goal. And we'll go over that later when we're building one out. So let me get into Infusionsoft and show you how to build out a simple campaign. I'm going to go to my dashboard because when you first open up Infusionsoft, you're going to land on your dashboard. And we need to get into the campaign builder to create a campaign. So I'm going to hover over the Infusionsoft logo, come to the marketing section, and down to campaign builder and click it one time. And if you remember in what we're going to do today, I told you I'd show you how to get campaigns for free. I like to call these our Betty Crocker already created recipes. They're already boxed up for you. If you notice on the right hand side, there's two buttons. One is called the Get Campaign Templates button. The other one is called Create a Campaign. If you click on the Get Campaign Template, there's lots and lots of different campaigns in there. And I would recommend that in the search you type in Icon 17. Those will be our most recent up-to-date campaigns and you can get them put into your application for free. Don't do it now because we're going to make one from scratch. We're going to learn how to make the recipe from scratch. But if you're ready to, to do an event, or if you want to do a birthday campaign, or you want to do a product launch, you can come here to Get Campaign Templates and import that campaign right into your Infusionsoft app. Super important to understand how they work, so we're going to create a campaign from scratch by clicking the green button, Create a Campaign. I'm going to click that one time. When I click it, this box will automatically appear, and it's asking me to name my campaign. And the best advice I can give you I call it a Judy Miller tip, is name it what makes sense to you. No one's going to judge the name of your campaign. No one's going to see the name of your campaign except you and other users. So name it what it is. Name it what it makes sense. This is going to be my, let me get my cursor over there, my offer campaign. I'm naming it what it is because it makes sense to me. If you have lots of people using your campaign builder, have them put their initials at the beginning. So this is Judy's My Offer Campaign, and this is Casey My Offer Campaign, and this is Paige's My Offer Campaign. Then you'll be able to keep track of whose campaign is which. Now I'm going to hit the Save button. Once I hit the Save button, you'll notice on the very top under Campaigns in the black toolbar all the way to the left, here's My Offer Campaign. And if I click on that campaign's word, it will take me back into my campaign library. So now I have my blank canvas and I get to build out my marketing campaign right here. And if you remember, the first ingredient is a goal. Campaigns begin with a goal. I'm going to come to my goals. And I told you guys we're going to work on web forms, so I'm going to grab a web form, move it right onto the canvas. And if you can notice, there's a blue bar underneath that form. And anytime that blue bar shows up, it says, hey, rename me. Don't leave me as default web form submitted. Please rename me. So I'm going to rename this Offer Sign Up. You can name it whatever you want. And if you want to rename it, just double click and highlight it and rename it. Super easy so far. So we're going to create the foundation of the campaign first, goal sequence, and then we'll go build it out. I'm going to pause for a second and get a drink of water and give you guys a break. And I'm back. So we have our form. A goal is connected to a sequence. So I'm going to come over to sequences in my toolbar on the left, grab my sequence, move it out into my canvas. Make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see. The bar came up as blue. That's saying, please rename this. It's called Untitled Sequence. Name it something else. So I'm going to call this Offer. Whoa. Offer. Well, I can't spell. And Welcome and more. That's what it's called. Offer and welcome and more. That's what the name of my sequence is because it's going to have an offer in there, a welcome email, and then more. So I'm going to name it what it is. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the goal, so I'm highlighting my goal, to my sequence. I need to connect the two. In order to connect two objects inside of the campaign builder, simply hover over the one to the left, 
wait for the arrow to appear, grab the arrow, just move it into the middle. Let me do it again. I'm going to delete that arrow by highlighting it and hitting delete. Hover over the icon before, grab the arrow, move it right into the middle, and now they're connected. And my simple campaign is complete, and I can start working on it right now. The first thing I want to do is make my form. So I'm going to put my cursor in the middle of the form and double click. And because I picked the form as a goal, Infusionsoft knows to open up my form builder, just like that. It doesn't take me to a different page, just opens it up right here. It's usually a lot faster. Sorry about that. Come on, open. There we go. This is my form builder. It always shows up in default mode. And it disappeared. Let me open up my campaign again. Not sure why it disappeared. Campaign Builder. Here's my offer campaign. Here's the structure. I'm going to put my cursor in the middle of the web form, double click, and the web form builder is going to open up. When the web form builder opens up, it's going to look exactly like this, and this is your default. And you get to build your form whichever way you want. If you have one from MailChimp or one from Constant Contact, you will just recreate it right here and make a parody. I'm going to create one right now, and the first thing I want to do is put in a title and let them know what they're signing up for. So I'm going to come to Snippets right there in the middle, grab Title, and drag it where I want it. Highlight it because it's all in Latin right now, and I'm going to say, Get My Offer Now. Put in some exclamation points. Now, for aesthetic reasons, it doesn't look that great because the, the title is butted right up against the first field. So I'm going to put a spacer and grab a spacer and put some space there. I'm going to go down to 10 spaces, hit Save. Awesome. That looks so much better. I can change the color just by highlighting it, coming into the Format tab, and I can even change the color of that title if I want to. If you're going to post this form on Facebook or on LinkedIn or send it in a postcard, or send it in an email, you may want to put your image in there and put in your logo. This one's going to go on my website, so I'm not going to put my logo on it because my logo's on my website, so I don't need it. You may want to put a paragraph and let them know what they're going to be getting. Hey, get this great offer. You know, it's for a short time only, etc. But I don't need that because all the content's going to be on my website. I just want a form to start collecting information. Mohammed just asked, hey, what's the spotlight? The spotlight is my favorite snippet. It gives you the ability to put an image to the left and then content to the right. So I could use that snippet instead. Get my offer. get rid of the content, and then there's just an arrow right there if you want to use that. This is the best deal of the century. Don't miss out. So that's the spotlight, and then I can double click here, and I can change this little arrow. That's probably not what we want because that is a Christmas. I'll put in the little cute fox. You can make it smaller by clicking on it. Or grabbing one of the boxes and making it smaller. So as you can see, you can do that. You wouldn't want to put your logo in the spotlight because it's going to move it to the left. If I were you, I'd take the Someone asked about the logo. I take an image, put it on top, and this is where I put my logo. So let me show you what that would look like. So that would be my logo just like that. 
So I put the logo in using an image, spotlight if you want an image on the left and content on the right. So this is my offer, this is my title, and now I want to grab fields. It already has first name in there. First name is already in the default. If you need their last name, just double click the first name field and then check off last name, hit save, and now you have first name and last name. You can see that you can require it or not require it if you want. If you need other fields, just come to the field snippet tab and you can add other fields. If you need their phone number, you can grab their phone number. If you need their address, you can grab their address. Just be forewarned that the more things you ask for in a form, the more it becomes a form blocker. I don't want to give someone my first and last name because I'm not ready for them to start looking at me on Facebook. I may not want to give my phone number because I don't want them to start calling me, and I certainly don't want you, you to have my address yet. However, if you're going to give me a free consultation or you're going to send me a free chapter of your book, I may give you my address and my phone number because it matches what you're going to be giving me. I'm just giving these people offers. They don't really know me from Adam yet, so I'm not going to put anything but first name, last name, and email. But you do have the option to put different fields in there if you need them. The next thing I'm going to do is change the Submit button. When you double-click the button, the Button Builder opens up and you get to change the button. I'm going to change this to Get Offers Now or Get Offer Now. I can change the alignment to left, right, and center, so it's pretty simple. If I click on Advanced Styling, I can actually change the background of the button to a prettier color. I kind of like teal. I can change the font family. I can make the border a little bit thicker if I want to. I can make the corners rounder or less round if I want to. And I can even change the size and make it bigger or smaller just by toggling on those buttons. When I hit save, you'll notice that my button changed and it says get offer now and it's really, really dark. I'm going to change the alignment and put it in the center. Awesome. So there's my form. It looks good. It's not a perfect form, but I'm just goofing around with you guys right now. But that's my form. I probably wouldn't put the fox in it unless I, put, I had something about foxes or if I was a veterinarian. But we're going to go with this because Mohammed wanted to see how the spotlight worked. Once I'm done creating my form, I'm going to come over to the right-hand corner and hit that draft button and set it to ready. And you don't have to be scared to set something to ready. Ready is just telling Infusionsoft, hey, Infusionsoft, I changed it from default. It's not going to magically go out. It's not going to magically, you know, be sent to people. It's not magically going to show up on your website. It's just telling Infusionsoft it's out of default mode. Let me get you, give you a second and get a drink of water. And I'm back. After we set it as ready, letting Infusionsoft know that it's out of default mode, we're going to go to the next tab. I'm working all the way from the left. We were in design mode. Now we're going to hit thank you page. And the thank you page gives you some real estate to let people know that they had a su successful submission. You wouldn't imagine how many times I filled out a form four or five times because I didn't know if it went through or not. It just defaulted back to the form. This gives you a page to let people know, yay, you did it. It's a successful submission. It automatically has a great company. I'm going to put my logo on it. So I'm going to double click a great company. And I'm going to choose my logo. There's my logo. That looks great. If I want to make it smaller, I can just click on it and grab the arrows. I don't know why. They're, there they are. And make it a little bit smaller. Just like that. It's automatically going to say, thanks for filling out our form, and it's going to grab their first name because we asked for their first name inside the form, it's going to bring them in their first name. So I'm going to change this to, you are signed up. You did it. So I'm just adding to it so you can see it work. Underneath it says, we will contact you shortly. So that's where you can put, you know, Hey, thanks for signing up. You should be getting an email in a moment. If you don't, please check your spam folder. Sometimes they sneak in there. So you can be a little bit more whimsical, 
or if you're a finance company, it can, you can say, please check your inbox. You should have an email sitting there immediately. If not, please check your spam folder. Sometimes emails get, get caught there. So this is great real estate to let them know what to expect. And then you do want to redirect them somewhere. So it says, click here to continue browsing. This can say, get back to website, check out my blog, follow us on Facebook, whatever you want to put there, and then link it. So I'm just going to link this one to Infusionsoft, www.infusionsoft.com, just like that. Hit Insert Update, and my thank you page is done. The next tab moving over to the right is your setting page. If you want to be notified via email, every time you get a new lead, every time somebody fills this out, you can do that by putting your email address under notification email. If you have someone else that you'd like to be notified, put a comma and you can put their email address. They do not have to be a user inside Infusionsoft for you to notify them. It will send an email to the email address. The email subject line will be whatever you put here. This one says notification, a form was filled out. But you might put notification of form was filled out for my great offer. And you'll get an email that says exactly that. This bot detection is new. And if somebody goes in and fills out a form 10 times, they put Santa Claus, they put, you know, Donald Trump, they put um, Heidi Klum, they put Simon, I just got done watching America's Got Talent. If they fill that out 10 times, a CAPTCHA code will come up the 10th time or the 9th time. And if you want to opt out of that, you can opt out of that. But it will help you from getting, you know, bots and people putting in silly stuff and spam bots. I'm done with my notification. If I don't want to be notified, I'm getting too many um, new leads. Just get rid of your email just like that, your email address, and you won't get those notifications anymore. The person will still be put into Infusionsoft. You can still check and see how many people opted in. You just won't be notified by email. The next tab is the code tab. And just to let you know, you don't grab the code till you publish the campaign. If you do grab the code, before you publish the campaign and send it to your developer or send it to the person that's helping you out, it will be the default form that we saw at the very beginning with no title, no um, change of button. It will just say be exactly what we saw at default. You have to publish the campaign in order for the code to work. We don't publish the campaign to the end, but I'm going to go over this anyway. If you have a webmaster, like Judy, I have somebody help me. I don't even want to see the code. Awesome. Come down to have your webmaster do it, put in their email address, type in, hey, Frank, can you get this out immediately or get this on my website? Send email. Frank will get all the code he needs. Your web developer does not have to be a user inside of Infusionsoft. They'll get everything right there. If you're going to do it yourself, click on do it yourself, grab the code by copying it, and then go to your website, go to your admin page, and paste it in. The only difference between the JavaScript snippet and the HTML snippet is just say that I didn't like that fox in my web form. So I got it on my website, I looked at it and I go, yep, don't like it. I go back in and take out the fox, republish the campaign. If you use a JavaScript snippet, it will mirror those images so I don't have to go back to my website and put the code back in. It will automatically make those changes when I republish. If I use the HTML code, I have to take the fox out, republish the campaign, grab the code again, and go put it on my website. So you're thinking, well, heck, Judy, why wouldn't I just always use the JavaScript snippet yet then? Well, sometimes it doesn't work with the theme you're using. Sometimes it doesn't work with the, the platform that you're using, like Wix. Our JavaScript snippet doesn't work, so you do need to use the code. If you don't have a website yet, well, Judy, I don't have a website yet. I'm just going to do Facebook ads and send out emails first and put in a link. I'm going to do a direct mailer, and I just want to put in a link on the postcard. Awesome. We have a hosted version that Infusionsoft will actually host for you. So you don't even need a website yet to start collecting leads. It's amazing. If you're going to do Facebook ads, this is what you'll use right here. The only difference between this web form 
And the pretty one is you can change the end of the pretty one to get this offer now. You can just change the ending to it. Hit save, and now I have a pretty URL that says get this offer now instead of 81A9. The only difference. I'm going to go over share with this network. I don't like to, but I always get questions about it, so I'm going to go over it. If you want to share this with your Twitter, um, get this sent as a, a um, truncated link with Twitter. You just simply click right here and put in your Twitter handle. It does have to be published first. With Facebook, it only connects with your Facebook personal page, not your business page. So that's a little bit of a stinker, and that's why I usually don't talk about it because I don't like to tell you that. But if you click on Share with your Facebook, it's going to put in the link on your Facebook personal page. So the best rule of thumb and the best thing to do is use the hosted version. Let me make sure that I didn't, that I unchecked that I did. Use the hosted version and use this link for your Facebook post. I'm done with my form, so I'm going to go back to my campaign, and now you'll notice that the form is light green with gray stripes, and that means that it's out of default mode and it's ready to be published. Yay! So we got the first part done. The second part is the sequence. When we double-clicked the goal, the web form builder opened up. When we double-click the sequence, the sequence builder opens up. And what do we want to do first? That start button right there says, as soon as someone reaches the goal, this is what's going to happen next. So that little start button right there that's light green is asking you, what do you want to happen automatically next? And you get to use your marketing brain and think, hmm, what do I want to happen next? Well, I went to the other two webinars, and I've learned a little bit about tags, and Infusionsoft likes to organize their people based on tags. So I want to tag these people that they signed up for my offer. So I'm going to come down to Process, grab the tag, put it right next to my Start. The arrow automatically appears, and I want to create a tag that's called Offer List Sign Up. So I'm going to double-click my tag because it's gray, and I'm going to call this offer, and I already have one main newsletter offer and sign up. I'm going to call this one June offer sign up. I'm going to create the tag right on the fly, hit save, and now my tag is created, and you know that visually because it's green with gray stripes, meaning it's ready. Now what do I want to do? Well, I promised people that signed up that they'd get an email with an offer immediately. So I'm going to come to Email, move it onto my, my um, sequence thread, and it turned blue underneath, which means rename it. Right now it's called Untitled Email. I'm going to call this one Welcome. I wish I could type. Welcome and Offer. It's gray, so I need to set it up. To set it up, I double-click it. When I double-click it, it brings me into the Email Builder, just like that. Now you can create one of our templates and start from scratch, or I was smart, I already created a template and saved it into my templates. I'm just waiting for it to open. Here are my templates. I'm going to scroll down until I find the one that says welcome. There it is. Thanks for signing up. Use template. You do have to come into the, the draft button in the right-hand corner, change it to ready, go back to my sequence, and now you can see that envelope is green and it's ready to go. Now what do I want to do? Hmm. Well, if they don't take me up in the offer, I want to wait a couple days and I want to give them another offer or give them the offer again. So I'm going to come to Delay Timer, put the timer out into my canvas. It's gray, so I need to double-click it. Three days is pretty good. I think I'll wait three days, so I'm going to hit Save. And now it's green, meaning it's ready. I want to give them a second offer. I can either come over to Communications and grab that email again, or I can come to the one that I've already created, right-click it, make a duplicate because it's already branded, move it here, 
connect them by going to the icon to the left, and I'm going to double click and call this Offer 2. Double click the email and it's going to open up the same exact email that I had in email number one, but this one's going to be here is the offer one more time. Change the content because I don't want to send the exact email out twice. Set it ready. Go back to my sequence. And now I have email number one and offer number two. Then what do I want to do? Hmm. I think I want to wait a couple more days. Double click the clock and this time I think I'm going to wait two days. And I want to send a third offer. Right click offer two, hit duplicate, and I'm going to move this one down to the left and then attach them. Or down below so now it's going to move to the left. Double click underneath and I'm going to call this one offer three. It's gray. Gray means it's not done. Double click and then I make it ready and I'll answer your question in a moment. Third time's a charm. Do not miss out on this offer. Set it ready. Go back to my sequence. So, they filled out a form, they get a tag applied to their contact record. They never know it, but I do as the Infusionsoft user, I can search for them. They get the first email. Three days later, they get the second email. Two days later, they get the third email, and I'm going to put another timer here. And this timer is going to be for two weeks, so I'm going to go to weeks. And if they don't purchase, I'm going to send them something in two weeks. I'm going to put an email here. another timer and I'm not going to set these ready because I want to show you what happens if you have something that's not set ready. I don't have to have this campaign completely finished because I actually have two weeks before this email is going to go out and then I have another timer. So I have two weeks before somebody even opts in before they're even going to get to this email right here. So I can publish it now and get this rolling. Going to come up to the sequence and set it ready. Go back to my campaign. Goal, sequence. Now, there are some things that I need to show you in here because I have offers in there. So if they sign up, they're going to get an offer. And if they purchase, I need to have, have something for them to purchase. I'm using Infusionsoft's e-commerce, so I'm just going to do product purchased. I attach them together. Double-click my shopping cart, and I only have one product. And now I have a form that people can fill out, a couple emails in here with offers, and then a goal. I will explain what happens if somebody clicks on the first email, but I'm going to go ahead and publish this so I can test it and see if it works. So I'm going to come up to the Publish button in the right-hand corner and click it one time. Once you do, Infusionsoft will go through and it will comb that campaign with a fine-tooth comb and see if it works. The most important part is campaign passes functional inspection. Yes, that means that everything that I've created is going to work. It also says two elements marked as not ready. I know that. There was a timer and an email. We already knew that. Emails aren't personalized, that's okay. I didn't put their first name in the email, that's okay. And I keep on having to hit the publish button instead of just going out of that. So again, it passes functional inspection, so I'm going to hit the publish button. And now my campaign is live and ready to use. You can see that it took me on a different canvas. This is a different screen. This is campaign reporting. If you want to find out more about this, you can go to the Help Center and type in campaign reports, and it will go over this campaign reporting screen. But because we're on a webinar, I want to test this out and see if it works. So I'm going to hit Edit. And now you'll see our campaign is back to the regular canvas, and everything is emerald green, which means it's published and it's ready to use. Now I'm going to test it out. To test it out, I'm going to double-click the form. I 
I don't know why it's taken so long to open. And I'm going to come to the code, click on the hosted version, and I'm going to click on the hosted URL. When I do it, opens up my form and I'm going to fill it out. And I'm going to put, I'm going to put my daughter's name, but I'm going to put my email address. Now because we have a thank you page, it's going to say, you got it, Cassidy. So let's see, get off for now. There it is. You are signed up, Cassidy. You did it. Because I typed Cassidy in there, Cassidy is going to appear right there. If I put Santa Claus, Santa Claus would have appeared. So we know that part worked. Now let's get out of the campaign builder and let's go to contacts and search for Cassidy. There's Cassidy Miller. Open up her contact record and she should have got the tag June Offer Sign Up because that's the tag we made in this campaign. So I'm going to scroll down and there it is, June Offer Sign Up. It was added to her account on June 1st, so we know that that part worked. Scroll down a little bit further, I'm going to click on this little campaign button right here. And we'll see Offer and Sign Up, June 1st at 1036. Offer and Sign Up email sent, June 1st at 1036. And a tag was applied at 1036 on June 1st. Yes, the email was sent out. It created a contact record and it tagged the new contact. That's amazing and we made it in less than 20 minutes. Well, 30 minutes. Upcoming items. She's going to get Offer 2 on June 5th and Offer 3 on June 7th and then there's a timer for June 21st. But wait, Judy, what happens if Cassidy buys it after the first email? I don't want her to get Offer 2 and Offer 3. She'll think I'm an idiot. She'll think it's automated and she'll know the trick and she'll never buy from me again. Let me show you how that's corrected. It's already fixed for you. Here's my offer campaign. There's one active contact and if I click on that it will be Cassidy Miller, which is awesome. I'm going to open up the campaign and if you remember, they sign up, they get a tag, they get email number one, two days later they get the second offer. The second offer may be for even more off. It'd be terrible if they got that. If they, cre if they hit that button to buy, I don't want them to get any more. Inside this sequence, let me make it bigger so you can see it. Inside this sequence, you'll see there's a little blue flag in the left hand corner. And if I click on that little blue flag, it says, hey Infusionsoft, when that person reaches a goal, please stop immediately and move them further on down the funnel. If they buy an email number one, please stop this part of the campaign and push them further along. If they don't buy an email number one, please send them email number two. But if they buy an email number two, please stop this sequence and push them further on down the funnel. Well, Judy, why would I ever put people in run until completed? Let me give you an example. I'm a veterinarian, and I'm letting people sign up for a five-part series of how to have a stress-free veterinarian visit. I offered them a five-part series, but then I want them to click on a link and schedule an appointment. If they click on the link and schedule the appointment, awesome, that's great. But I still promised them a five-part series. So even if they reach that next goal, it doesn't matter. It's great, but I still want them to get the five-part series. So please run until this series is completed. For the most part, we want to stop immediately and push them further on down the funnel. I'm sure you've heard that before. It automatically defaults to the flag. So let me give you a scenario. They sign up. They get email number one. They purchase. Now I want them to go into this sequence. This is going to be customer sequence. I'm going to double click this sequence and the first thing I'm going to do is tag them as a new customer. Double click and I think I have a customer tag already. Awesome. And then I want to send them a welcome email. And I want to spell it right. 
Then I want to wait one day. And then I may want to deliver the product or put a task in there for me to get that product delivered to them, a fulfillment. Goal, sequence, goal, sequence. And here's the way it goes. If they fill out the form and they get email number one and they buy, takes them out of the sequence and moves them further on down the funnel. If they fill out the form, they get email number one and they don't buy, then they're going to get email number two. And when they get email number two and if they buy, it's going to take them out of the sequence and move them further on down the funnel. Because of that flag right there, that flag tells Infusionsoft, stop this immediately when they reach the goal. Isn't that exciting? I hope that you think that's exciting. Let me erase my drawings. So I'm going to go over a few more slides and then I'll get to questions because I know that this is going to, or it's going to go longer than an hour. This is a campaign. It is super, super, super complex, but it's not really because I'm going to put it under a microscope for you. And if you watch, it's just a goal that pushes people into a sequence. When they reach the next goal, it takes them out of everything to the left and pushes them to the next sequence. When they reach the next goal, it pushes them into a sequence and everything on the left stops and pushes them to the next goal. Now you can have these in all different canvases. You don't have to have it all on one canvas. I think this is really confusing. And if you have something that breaks, you're going to have to go in and really dissect it. So it's probably smarter to build simple, simple campaigns in different canvases. But I wanted to show you that this is just goals pushing to sequences. That's it. Remember this. Your simple one campaign is way more important than your complex none campaign. Everybody tries to build out what's on the right before really feeling confident with what's on the left. You got to feel that confidence and know that it's going to work before you're willing to take the next step and build out a more complex campaign. Because I want to show you what this really is. It's a goal that pushes people into a sequence. And when they reach the next goal, it pushes them into a sequence. And it's not hard, but you really have to feel confident what's on, what's, with what's on the left first in order to feel confident and build out what's on the right. And you'll get there. We all started out with the left, I promise, even Judy Miller. So it's not hard because you're the expert in your business. So getting in there and building out that map or that campaign inside the campaign builder should be pretty simple. Sometimes it's easier to put it on a piece of paper. I want to send one email, then I want to do it. A timer, another email, a task, another email, another timer, and another email. You can think it out in a piece of paper and then build it out in the campaign builder because you're the expert of your business. So my challenge for you is build a simple campaign. Create it, do the automation, publish it and put yourself into it, ask a couple friends if they can try it out for you, and certainly you can put me in your um, Infusionsoft and try, try it out with me, test it, see the magic happen, and then add to it. Make that more complex campaign. Tech support can help. Call up and say, hey, I, I want to add another sequence. You know, is this done right? Hey, Judy, I made this campaign. Can you take a look at it and see, see if it's going to work? I have people do that all the time. And my email address for everyone is basictraining at infusionsoft.com. Pretty simple. Basictraining at infusionsoft.com. Also, we have a, a product called our Facebook ads. You may not be there yet, but in the future you may say, hey, I need to generate some leads. I need some leads to buy my product. And we do have a Facebook product. This bit.ly link will get you a free consultation. So you may not be ready for it yet, but you may, or in the future you may. So you might want to write this down, and I'll put this in your email. It's just a bit.ly link called Facebook Help Now. And the person you'll talk to is Daniel, who is the nicest guy in the world. And we'll let you know if you're ready for that or not, because it does cost money. Let's go to questions. I make this bigger so I can see it. Um, Uzar asked, what's the difference between logo and image? The only difference is the logo image is created to be 600 by 100 pixels, and the image comes up whatever size you have it. So let me show you real quick. Um, 
I have to go into the, not in the email builder, in, in the, If I come to logo, it will put in the logo in whatever size you have. It will, I'm sorry, it will automatically create it in a specific size. But if you put an image, the image will grant it whatever size you put in that image. So if your image is 10 by 10, it will put it in as 10 by 10. The logo will go in all the way across like a banner. That's the only difference. So Mohammed asked, what if they got the first offer? How do I make sure they don't get the second offer? I already answered it. Yes. So we already answered that, which is awesome. Let me see if I can find my cursor. Inside the sequence, because that little flag is there, that little flag says, hey, Infusionsoft, when the next goal is achieved, please Stop this immediately. I don't want them to get the second offer. Uh, Mohammed asked if I can go over the different field snippets in the form builder. I can. So we have name. That's name. Name has first name, last name, title, etc. Email address is already there. Other, if you click on other, once it opens up, you can choose between any of the fields that we already have inside of Infusionsoft, or you can come down and create a custom field. I need to know their gender. I'm a gym, and I need to know if they're female or male. So I'm going to come here, and I can create an actual dropdown. Male, female. Save this field, and now I just created a brand new field specific to my industry because I needed to know their gender. The radio button is exactly that. It's a radio button. Let me show you an example of this on somebody's website. I think I have it saved. I have it saved on here somewhere. Maybe I don't. I have a customer, Chris Beat Cancer. I just didn't want that that pop up to show up, but it did anyway. So let me get in there again. It got there before I could get there. There we go. Title, content, content, first name, email, and this is the radio button. The radio button says which describes you best. I'm a cancer patient. I'm helping someone else. I'm into prevention. So that radio button is the radio button snippet that I just showed you. You can have people make a decision or a choice on that form. And he changed his button to a little bit rounder, changed it to the color blue, and wrote subscribe. And I'm going to save that image. There we go. So that's the radio button. I can put in, I have a cat, dog. I can add a plus sign and add more, both a cat and dog. Save, and now I just put a decision in there that people can choose. I have a cat, I have a dog, I have both a cat and dog, and the label is big, so I do need to go into format and change that label, but I just wanted to show it to you. That's a radio button. Phone number is phone number. Checkbox check is just that. It's a checkbox. Please add me to newsletter. Hit save, and I have the labels on really big right now, but that says please add me to newsletter, and I spelled it wrong. 
but that's a checkbox. Address is address. CAPTCHA code is if you want to put a CAPTCHA code on there so that people um, can put, you know, make sure that, that they're not a bot. That's our CAPTCHA code. You can change the background of it. You can change the font color, etc. And that's what the CAPTCHA code is. A hidden field is a little bit more intense. It's if you need to, if you're making a survey and you need to hide some fields. And then a partner is if you're using our referral partners, you'll have the partner tab where you can create a form for a partner to sign up for the referral partner program. And those are the different fields. Mohammed asked, did you send the email from yesterday's webinar, the one with the recording? I did send the email yesterday with the recording. If you didn't get it, look in your spam folder because it's a really big email. But I did send it out. I always send them around 2 o'clock. So you should have got that. If you didn't, Mohammed, please let me know and um, put down some of your email address. So before we leave, two things. If you are not signed up for our Small Business Success Academy, I want you to send me your app name so I can get you signed up for it. It's a free learning center that will help you go further with Infusionsoft. If you don't know your app name, if you simply open up your Infusionsoft application, come up to the browser window, it's the two letters and three numbers before Infusionsoft.com. The second question, if you are interested, we have something that we're starting called launch parties. Launch parties are very specific. They're kind of like, let me stop recording this for a minute. But thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to be sending you a recording. Once you get that recording, you'll also have access to my YouTube channel that has lots of other videos on it. So you can peruse through and watch other videos where I teach other aspects of Infusionsoft. It's free. And thank you so much for being an Infusionsoft customer. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for staying connected with me for an hour. And I hope that you have a great day. Bye-bye.